What's going on everybody? It's your boy Spencer taking a look again at this Math Mac rank 4 Utopia deck. I don't really know. It's like a mismatch of cards, but I made this video like days I Pre-released it and then I went on a cruise and like the day I got on the cruise the band was dropped and circular was you know dropped down to one and so is Cyframe Gear Gamma and to be honest with you, I've kind of learned that running Math Mech Circular to, at one in this deck is actually pretty much optimal. So that's always good. Uh, so that, that that ended up being a big benefit. Uh, this going to one definitely hurt, but you should still play it. It's like absolutely insane if it goes off. It's it's so worth playing at one. Like it's the, the brick is there. It is what it is. But when you do see this, especially if your opponent tries to droll you, and obviously that's not going to go through, and then you can also go into Cyframe <laughs> Um, Frame Lord Omega, take another card out of their hand, and then over the course of your turn, if you have a normal hand, you'll be able to go into Laplacian grabbing another card from their hand. So it's like literally hand control. Um, kind of the best way to describe it. And if you do are going through a regular combo at that point, you'll also have a super factorial, almost like getting rid of all of your opponent's cards. Because if, even if they play, you know, and you go into the second Laplacian, like whatever card they have on the field or set, and the last card they have in hand, it's so good. But... <laughs> um, what I, all of that is what I mean to say is the deck is still like more than playable and it's like borderline good. Uh, it's like it's really fun to play at the very least, you know, on a casual level. Uh, so obviously you have the brick, Cyframe, Driver, followed up by uh, Gamma. Absolute must just describe that. Um, Nibiru, Ash, Dark Ruler. This is actually a really important target, I think, for cross out. Maybe the most important. Uh, it, it'll win you games, like just straight up if you have cross out and your opponent just goes for this thinking that they beat you doesn't really like a lot of the times you'll see that in some of these replays because super factorial is like really the answer for dark ruler more than anything but if you do have this uh it's just even better it's like good going second too uh imperm i do run two draw i know it's kind of weird you could also run effect veiler i just don't think people are running effect veiler and if i am going to see this in my hand like say this was effect veiler and i drew this copy of it I'd rather have draw my hand than effect failure. So if I lose to effect failure, that's kind of unfortunate. But there's honestly some like really good um, like baits for imperm and ash, like morning star sometimes, and oh, so many times this card right here because it has this effect to bring out all these monsters, and your opponent just like thinks that that's where you imperm or effect failure. And it's really just bait because everything else in your hand that you search off of onomatopoeia can special summon itself. It's really cool. Um, so like I said. You could also just run Effect Veiler here. And then Galaxy Cyclone. It's either searchable. You can either basically send it to the graveyard or add it to your hand uh, through Photon Lord, which is really nice. Uh, it's actually incredible. It's like a really good tool. If your opponent's playing Floodgates, it's a searchable way to outfill those like, really hard to beat cards, which you normally wouldn't be able to do in like a combo-based deck, basically. This is really versatile. I love this card. It's a, it's a Galaxy card. Uh, this is Heroic Challenger, Knuckle Sword. So this is like the golden, like the perfect ratio of Heroic cards. This is like some of the best rank four stuff ever uh, printed. I think this is like pretty new when this card came out. But if you control two or more warrior monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand and then add a Heroic Spell and Trap. So one of the, the best things about this engine is that these cards don't overlay. Like if you see multiple cards, you would think that's bad. Like that's really the shortcoming of so many engines that you have so many ways to search it that you end up having too many copies, but it's really not the case. So if you open up this, uh, this card, you can search Challenger and then Challenger can search the Monster Reborn. Or if you open this card and Heroic Envoy, um, you know, you can search the other one. Basically, you can search Knuckle Sword, and um, they just all work together. It's just never going to be a brick. Seeing these cards in your hand is just always, always good. And then this is like the very small. This is all you need to play for the Onomat engine. Like these are the best cards from it. Uh, so that's Onomatopoeia, uh, Gaga Ga Coat, and Child. Now obviously this only searches two, but uh, the thing that's really cool is if you see this card pair in your hand and pick up, well pick up can actually just straight up search this card right here, the topic Onomatopoeia. So then when you do this, you can search in other two targets. Um, it's like super necessary. Sometimes it kind of stinks to see this in your hand randomly. Uh, but it is worth it uh, if you have these two cards. You don't want to just, like, have basically a brick between these two. Uh, you, like, want to have, like, higher-end combo chances. And this is basically how you do it, by having another copy. But I like it because it doesn't rely on a normal summon. So if this gets impermed, you just, you know, you just bring this out from your hand anyways. Uh, so it's like you only have one normal summon in the entire deck, basically. Uh, this is uh, circular, of course. This is just searchable out from the deck. One copy doesn't really do anything at all, in my opinion, to change like how good it is. Still just as effective. It's always searchable from the deck. 
And like I said, I think it's like optimal to play it this way. I think I played three copies in my original deck profile. Uh, diameter every once in a while and uh, you can like normal summon this if you don't like open up this part of the engine you just open up this other stuff uh, you can normal summon this and like bring back whatever you monster reborn you have three materials right off the bat so that's kind of cool um, but obviously you're, you're not going to uh, have that happen too much more like often because you're just not going to see these two cards in your hand at the same time uh, this is ascended sage three copies and then three copies of arm sage right just non-normal summon extenders you can actually just like go into your combo uh, sometimes without normal summoning. So if you do have a diameter in your hand, uh, you know, just you can use it basically. Uh, but otherwise, it's just you know, you, I was so sick of playing rank four decks and just like normal summon effect imperm. Okay, pass turn. Like this is the most like anti that deck at all. Like like I said, this there are two normal summons in the entire deck. Everything else special summons itself. I, I talked about these. So this is heroic call and then three uh, heroic envoy. Uh, you. Yeah, the rank up magic spell, of course. Onomatopoeia searches two. Reinforcement of the army uh, searches you basically anything else. You can also run Ember's Protect, but it's not super necessary. And honestly, I like straight up wouldn't do it. Um, you just you this card is too good. It kind of replaces it, and it's better. Uh, two crossout designator. You should you could also just I guess replace this with like called by the grave, but I'd rather have more consistency. Uh, just like have gas instead of passing turn because I have like crossout and imperms in my hand, or uh, called by the graves in my hand and then on pickup and then one copy of super math mech factorial i used to also run math mech edition but it i never it like pretty much never came up it was almost it was never worth it you know just theoretically a monster reborn so like more extenders and you could play it like maybe take that out here or whatever the case may be uh, i just i just never found myself searching it so uh, onto the extra deck, I talked about Omega and, and just how good it is for hand control. Uh, Zeus, pretty obvious. Number 99 that goes with Hope Harbinger and Photon Lord. Connected to the Utopia engine here, just really easy rank ups. This also helps you go into a two-pop Zeus going second if you really need to, right? If you can attack into something. Tornado Dragon, I do run some like generics and maybe there's like way better options. Maybe you want to run the Zodiac engine here or something, but I find myself really using Tornado Dragon uh, quite a bit actually. Abyss Dweller is what it is, like, you know, only good in pretty much specific matchups, but they're, they're, these are basically the two like real, I would say, you know, put what you want in there kind of slots. Uh, this is Alan Bershin, Laplacian. Uh, Utopic Sage. Maybe you want to run more copies of Zeus. Maybe that's just like better option, a uh, better thing to do, and like running. It's you can still run Tornado Dragon, take this out. Uh, but yeah, two Laplacian because a lot of the times you can make one, you know, during your first turn, and then it'll also just have another one with Super Factorial. This card's obviously incredible, and it's also an Omni Negate when it comes out. Utopic Sage helps you go into F Zero, and, and then Abyss Dweller. Uh, side deck is what it is, although one card I think is worth mentioning right now is like no material has to be like in an all-time usability. Cash Tira, you know, like the level four that turns into a level seven. This is like is that not like incredible no material uh like targets? And Sword Soul, it's really good. Pearly, it's really good. Branded, it could be good if they go into the one that banishes, so it can't banish itself. Uh, I think it's worth uh looking into uh, it won me a couple games i was messing around last night i could not think of another side deck card because uh, i was thinking like when you know you're going second and you, maybe your opponent's like not playing a super hand trap heavy deck um you know what can i do like what can what makes a really big impact and this card actually does like not pretty much ever in its existence but i think maybe now it's like kind of a sleeper you know everything else is like lightning storm evenly matched harpies this is an extra copy of dark ruler it's 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 pretty random you know another copy of droll so you have three nibiru that way you could have three copies there too but this is worth mentioning at least this card excite tonight i think i have a duel uh where i show it also helps you go into f0 super late too if you need to um castell is also just like really good removal if you know you're going second right you can take out a abyss dweller easily you could take out tornado dragon maybe you could take out an extra copy of Laplacian, probably something like that um, and, and fit these two in because these cards are really good this is like basically double pop zeus without having to use an extra material from the extra deck right it destroys all cards on the field and then if like they imperm that you can attack and then go into zeus and do it again if that makes sense you still have the same materials right two materials for zeus because three materials doesn't do anything um, but yeah that's the deck profile so now we can jump over uh into some replays here 
there are some pretty good ones. Uh, I will probably start here. It's against Sky Striker. Uh, this is obviously really, really good. I think I'm going first. Yeah, so the thing about the Math Mech engine is that it's not really um, like a brick necessarily. If you see it, like it's kind of unfortunate because they don't have like inherent summoning effects, but at the very least, they're not Garnets in the sense that um, like Alan Bershin can't special summon. It's from uh, like Graveyard or Hand, which is nice. And then you can go for Circular, which is really cool. Like early on, you can, um, you know, get this back from the Graveyard, get it that special summon effect. It's crazy that nothing like pretty much ever locks you especially the math mech engine it's kind of incredible at no point am i cyber lock doing any of this it's it's incredible uh so i can go ahead and tag this out right because the thing is that you need all three names into the graveyard or i i had opened this one this time but normally you need all three so and you'll see it i'm sure in one of these duels but basically um the other one contribute itself and bring back or bring out diameter from the deck that way you just have all three names in circulation but this is the combo. I wasn't able to go into um, Alan Bershin, unfortunately, but this is still a really good setup. So this is a uh, Utopic Future. This is a Spell Negate. This is going to turn into Photon Lord. And then I do have Alan Bershin ready. So a nice even distribution here. I don't have to fire this off as soon as possible. He does go for Widow Anchor here. I figure I'm just going to hand rip a card out of his hand. I have the Omni Negate. And basically all these other, um, you know, I'm going to have Photon Lord as well. And this card's just like really, really, really good against Sky Striker. And then, yeah, look at that. Uh, the one card I ripped was his Sky Striker, and I don't think he had any other way to uh, go through it. So a pretty good snipe there, but still had a lot of interruption left. Uh, and I'll show the other Sky Striker duel. Like, Utopic Future is pretty much like the best anti uh, Sky Striker card. I get to go first again. Some Sky Striker players uh, make you go first. It's really nice to have Cross out, right? I kind of have that answer for uh, the Dark Ruler if he has it, because otherwise I feel pretty comfortable on anything else he has. This is going to be more than enough, right? I'm going to be able to probably probably go into full combo, which is Alan Bershin, and then another one during his turn. And here you can see, you know, where it tributes itself here, which is nice. Uh, like the Nabla will go into um, diameter, I think it's called, yeah. That way, super uh, the factorial's online. So I go ahead and hand rip one here. A little bit of a weird hand. I could have, um, you know, ashed that, but it's actually not worth it. I already hand ripped him once, and I'm going to be able to do it again. I, I want to put him down to three cards, right? And then I have an Omni they gave for the other ones. And it's not like Sky Strikers are like very specific, you know. And I and you'll see here he goes for linkage. And when he does this, I steal it. So if even if he had a ray, like it wouldn't trigger it. And I have the Omni they gave. You know left for triple tactics he was kind of just like telegraphing that he had tactics there so it felt worth it like ripping out the cards from his hand versus maybe waiting for the best time when there really isn't a best time to do it against sky striker because ray would just kind of pretty much go through the loop all the same way regardless of what i do uh okay so let's go ahead and look at a, a match i had against labyrinth Again, seeing Napoli in the hand, it is what it is. I have all of these. I think I ended up just like normal summoning it, which is nice. If this was diameter, this would be like way better. And yeah, like I said in the deck profile, sometimes this can just get, get stuck in the hand, but I'm still going to be able to do some fairly decent things here. I contribute itself. That way I can go into Super Math Mech Factorial and still have the Utopia stuff going, which I think is nice. It's not full combo, but it's still a pretty good setup. Photon Lord, which can search me like Spell and Trap Disruption, you know, Hope Harbinger, and an Omni Negate. And if I get a lot of value out of Super Math Mech Factorial, obviously, I'll pretty much just like win the duel. Anything he searches or uh, he sets, I'm just going to be able to go into Super Math Mech. And here I go. I'm going to get rid of three of his cards. He's only going to have two left, and I'm going to have two interruptions for it. Or three, because I haven't even used Alan Bershin. And look at this. If he sets a card, too, like any form of interruption, I just searched out Galaxy Cyclone. Which is great. You know, it's such a simple setup and really not even full combo. I didn't get to do Laplacian twice. And even still, like, I, even the most basic of setups are, like, really good in this deck. Here's the other one against Labyrinth. Really good. So, like, the best thing about this deck is it just feels like the best part of all of these engines. Like, I'm just, like, cherry picking the very, uh, like, best of the best. And I think that's, you know, what makes this deck shine. Um, this is cool, right? Sometimes you just open this card and it's not bad at all. In this case, you know, if this was a, some form of interruption, that'd be great. And really, I think the best part is I'm going to force this out. You know, this would pop a card normally, but now it's not going to be able to. And this is like 
you know, if he does have some sort of floodgate, this is great for it. Or I can just, you know, get rid of the field spell. Uh, he did end up getting rid of draw, which is fine because it does like nothing against me. Heroic Envoy, and this is great. I'm probably going to end up just like pitching Diameter. I don't really need it. I just need it in the graveyard for, um, you know, the Math Mech stuff. I don't have to go through the Nablus stuff where I tribute it. It's just in my graveyard now, which literally like is n no different outcome. And there we go. There's the Gaga God Child. So those are the, all the extenders here. And then I can, you know, just bring this back as well with Gaga God Coat. Maybe I go into Alan Bershin now. And I'm going to get a lot of value out of this Laplacian, of course. And there we go. I can bring back another material. I may not be able to go into F-Zero, but that's fine. That's like, not really all that important. Three of his cards go, and then he surrenders. And I still had another math, uh, Super Math Mech Factorial. So I could have done this like in his like draw phase, done it again, and got rid of everything except for one card in his hand, which is like, what could that possibly do? Because I do, actually, I am going to have an F-Zero on the board, which is just absolutely insane. So good. So that was like super full combo, and basically just there's nothing much you can do. So you can see like the hand control stuff like really coming in. It's actually really nice. I'll show a few more. This is against Tier Lemon, but it's actually like Orcus. It's, it's a really interesting deck, which kind of makes sense, like setting all those things to the graveyard. Okay, so there goes Para, and I'm probably, I'll discard because I can still get another card out of Morningstar, and I'd rather have Droll just in case I get Dark Ruler. Like, it's a little bit of insurance, which I think is like way worth it, because I already have a ton of material here. I'm definitely like already in full comp. I did not need another one. And there goes Alan Burshin. I can do Circular. Sending the Nabla after bringing that back. Yeah, this is one of the best plays where you tribute Alan, like the uh, Utopic Sage, and bring back another level four, just because you know you're going into Laplacian. So you just like get more level four bodies out of it while setting yourself up ridiculously. And there we go. There goes one card out of his hand. And <laughs> ends up being kind of good for him, but that's okay. I'll still take, um, I'll still take it. It's totally worth it. I still think he needs like setup to use this card too. I don't think it's just like instantly live. And there we go. This is, this is like pretty much it. And uh, draw and lockbird, of course, is pretty good too. He goes for called by the grave. I figured uh, I'll go ahead and negate that. I think. Oh, he was going called by the grave for one of my math met cards. I could have chained this, but I figured I would wait for a better time, right? Like this is. I'd rather have like this card just like get rid of a bunch of cards out of his hand versus oh just activating it early to rip one card out. I think it ended up being worth it for sure. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and negate there and draw on Lockbur. That way I can't search anything for us turn. So I'm pretty much just like cementing my victory, I think. Yeah, I, yeah. He did mill some good stuff, but I think they're all like searchers, which is funny. Uh okay, so just a couple more duels here. This is against Hero. I'm pretty sure you can see how good Gamma is here. Oh, no. So sometimes it doesn't work, but that's okay. This is a really interesting setup. So normally you would think that this is um, not... Like, this is just a weird hand, right? It's you Ascended Sage, Ascended Sage, oh, excuse me, and a Rank Up Magic. So that <laughs> that's just awkward because, like, these things search it. It's kind of bad. But you can do some pretty creative stuff here. Uh, so... I went into Alan Burshin, so I'm actually going to be able to get um, like Alan Burshin into the mix too, while still being able to go full combo. So I can go ahead and tribute itself, and then go and so this is like kind of a little creative way to have a better end board here. And then this can go into diameter, and now I can just like go into Utopia because I already did have the rank up magic spell. So turning a really, really like what seemingly is a horrible hand into you know something respectable. Cool thing is, is Dragon Arc can also you know just some summon this into the extra monster zone, meaning I can activate this with like kind of no pressure. And then I'm just going to add this to my hand. I do have a monster to gain already, so that's fine. And there we go. There's Dark Lord O'More, and like here's my insurance, you know. And obviously at this point, I'm thinking, well, I might as well just go into Super Math Mech Factorial because I think Ferris has to discard a card anyways. And at that point, he'll just be like really low on advantage. And there goes Ferris. I'm just going to go ahead and negate. And that's probably just it. You know, I don't think... He already used his normal summon. If he had, a, like, a, a hero lives, that'd be, like, the most, like, five-headed move I think I've ever seen. Uh, that'd be pretty sick, but uh, he didn't. He didn't have it. Didn't get punished there. And just one more.
Okay, so this is obviously just like an insane hand and get rid of Nibiru, just, you know, switch it out for like mega extenders. Obviously the Nibiru is just there for the cross out target at this point. Okay, you know, this is going to be the full setup. I think my opponent is playing a 46 card list, okay. That's obviously very optimal, I think, for heroes. I contribute there, go for Nabla. That can switch itself out for diameter. And there we go. There is the Laplacian. I do have the extender here. So this is the best hand possible. And, you know, sniping a hero lives, of course, is really, really good. I'm off to a really good start. I can go ahead and rank up there, go for Dragonar, go for Hope Harbinger, and set one. So I do have a Photon Lord in the waiting but I don't really have any rush there goes dark ruler again must be nice and look at this the more things change I guess the more they stay the same pretty much gonna be the uh, exact same setup here and there we go I'm gonna rip a card out of his hand he does have droplets so that made things a little bit different but now he doesn't have anything like to actually use which is funny uh, so even through all of that just through like the resource loops that I was going through um, like I was just out resourcing my opponent basically uh, to the point where they just couldn't make any plays. But uh, that is this Math Mech Rank 4 deck. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Other than that's going to do it for today's video, and I'll see you guys next time.